Okay, uh, let's look at how we can determine the length uh, of an indicated portion of the of a vector valued function. So uh, how we determine the length is like this. Our L, which is our length, will be equals to um, the integral, of course, evaluating from A to B of um, the magnitude of the first integral of uh, our vector valued function, RRT. Okay. So we're talking about the mag the magnitude of the first derivative of our vector uh, vector valued function. So um, we are going to be evaluating from a to b, meaning it's more like your a is less than or equal to t, less than or equal to what, less than or equal to b. Okay. So we can given in this form, or sometimes we can be given uh, in vector form, such as maybe it's in form of x1, let's say um, y1 here, z1. Then we have another x2. Uh, y2, uh, z2 here. So uh, it can either be in this form, meaning the interval. It can either be starting from this point to, to that point there, or it can be given uh, in this form, or maybe just say uh, a, comma, a, comma b there. It's still one and the same thing. So for this one, we just have to do some uh, parameterization to come up with uh, um, to come up with the lower limit. Uh, it's more like the uh, the universal form of the the universal value of the of the lower limit as well as the upper limit okay so uh we're going to go through a few examples to make sure to say we understand how we determine the length of a given portion of um, a curve so the first example that we're going to look at is um let's say our r uh, let me call this my a let's say our vector varied function r t is equals to uh, three sine um, 2ti 2ti there plus then 3 cos 2t uh, j plus t squared k so you are, you are evaluating from 0 okay to 5 so first of all what you need to do here is that you observe to say we need to find the first derivative so the first derivative of what we have here is that uh, you're going to get um, you're going to get 6 uh, 6 cos 2t okay the i uh, that would be minus 6 sine 2t in the j then plus 2t in the k like that all right so um what again we need to find is the magnitude so the magnitude of this of the first derivative the magnitude of the first derivative uh, we're going to square that part you're going to get uh, 36 uh, cos squared 2t that would be plus 36 uh, sine squared 2t 2t there then that would be plus um, 4t squared when you square that part okay so we can fact we can factor the 36 there we're going to get uh, like 36 uh, open bracket uh, cos squared 2t plus uh, sine squared 2t uh, of which we know that say this part is say what a 1 so what we remain with is uh, we're going to find that uh, this is this would be nothing but equals to 36 plus 4t squared then we can simplify this 4 can go into 36 9 times so i'm going to have root, uh, root of that would be 4 so that's 9 plus uh, t squared so we can even simplify this a bit further again we're going to get a 2 root uh, 2 root 9 plus t squared so now i end up having the magnitude of the first derivative over my vector valued function to be equals to 2 root 9 plus t squared Okay, so now let's try to determine the integral here. So um, I say my L is equals to my B is 5, my A is 0. Then my magnitude that I found was, uh, in fact, I think I can put the 2 outside here. Okay, so that would be a 5, 0. Then I'll have root of 9 plus T squared DT. Okay, so here I can use a uh, trick substitution. It's up to you which method that uh, is convenient for you. Um, myself, I'm going to use a uh, trick substitution. So I'm going to say, okay, uh, my t will be equals to 
my t will be equals to um, 3 uh, tan theta okay so I'm not just picking I'm not just I'm not just picking a tan at random there's a reason why I'm picking tan and I believe we are familiar now when it comes to trick substitution so meaning my dt is going to be equals to 3 sec squared theta d theta okay so we can now come and say okay our l is equals to 2 evaluated from 0 to 5 uh, I'm going to have root of this is 9 plus when I replace with what my t is which is this one here I'm going to get um, 9t, 9, I mean 9 tan squared theta. Then my dt, we found that our dt is uh, 3 sec, 3 sec squared theta, d theta. Okay, so meaning our L is going to be equal to 2. Um, uh, when, when you simplify that part, you're going to get a 3, okay, 3 root 1 plus uh, tan squared theta there, multiply it by 3. Uh, sec squared theta d theta then our l will be equals to so this by this to give us a 9 so 9 times this to the to give us 18 okay so from 0 to 5 so this part here is nothing but co uh, is nothing but sec that's just coming from the identity uh, sec squared theta minus tan squared theta is equals to 1 so meaning our sec uh, theta is equals to the square root of 1 plus uh, the tan squared theta. That's why I'm just saying this one, is, this part is just equals to what? Sec theta. Then when I multiply by that, that sec, then I'm going to have um, sec to the third theta d theta. Uh, can bring this up here. Okay, so now, um, what remains now is just a matter of us being able to um, integrate that part. So we can use, uh, you can use integration by parts, or you can try to recall the reduction formula, of which the reduction formula for sec is just equals to, uh, that is sec n minus 2 uh, theta, then that would be tan theta plus uh, open bracket, that would be n minus 2 then integral of uh, sec n minus 2 here, theta d theta there, okay, then divide by uh, n minus 1. So, having said that, and um, hmm, can we simplify this? Anyway, we'll take it the way it is. So, I'm going to say uh, integrating this part, so my n is a 3. When I subtract that would be a what? That would be a 1. So I'm just going to have a uh, sec theta uh, by tan theta. Then that's a plus. Um, that's a plus right there. Then 2 minus, uh, 3 minus 2, that gives us a 1. So I don't need to put it there. Then the integral of, uh, if you say 3 here, minus 2, so that will give you a 1. So it's like you still have an integral for what? For sec theta there and the integral for sec theta is nothing but natural log of uh, that's natural log of uh, sec theta okay that's uh, natural log of uh, sec sec theta plus tan theta okay that's the integral of that part so meaning I can say plus ln of uh, sec theta plus tan theta I close with that then from 0 to 5 but remember I still have a denominator here which is a 2 but I don't need to put it what I can do is that uh, I can try to make things easy for myself um, by dividing 2 into 18 so I'm supposed to have a 2 here so 2 into 2 1 2 into 18 is 9 okay so I can I can get rid of this part so this is a 9 Okay, so remember to say, uh, I can't substitute just here now because this 5 and this 0, they are in terms of t, not in terms of theta. So meaning, uh, I have to take this back into the, um, I, have to take the, I have to write the theta in terms of t. And remember to say, we have our t to be equals to 3 uh, tan theta. Okay, so meaning our theta is equals to uh, tan inverse of uh, t 
divided by what? Divide by 3. That's what our theta is. So we're going to say our L is going to be equals to 9. Then open bracket there. So that is going to be, instead of sec here, I'm going to write 1 over cos. But I'm going to say 1 over, instead of saying cos theta, I'll say cos. Why there is a theta, I'm going to put uh, tan inverse over t over 3. Multiply by uh, tan. Where there is theta for tan, I put tan inverse over t divided by 3 plus ln of the same here where there is sec I'm just going to write 1 over cos but where there is theta of the cos I'm going to say cos instead of saying theta I'll say uh, tan inverse over t over 3 um, then plus tan uh, then you're going to have tan inverse of the same t over t over 3 you are still evaluating from uh, from zero to what? Uh, from zero to five. Okay. So that means I can do the substitution now. I can say my L is equals to nine. Then we have those brackets. So um, this part when we go to our calculator, uh, I know to say if I use zero. It's just going to come out as zero, so I don't need to use the zero. I'll just use the the five itself. Anything anywhere where here I replace with the zero is going to be like um, it's going to be a zero because if you say zero divided by three for this part, that's going to give you a zero. And tan inverse, if you say tan inverse, uh, tan inverse of zero is still a zero. Okay, so we don't we don't need to use zero. We don't need to waste our time using zero. So I'm just going to find what. I'm just going to find in terms of the 5, which is my upper limit. So uh, if I say tan inverse, uh, tan inverse of uh, 5 divided by 3, I'm going to get something like uh, 59.036243 uh, Then I can say cos of that. So um, I want to take care of that part. So that's, that's going to be... Um, if we say cos uh, 59.0, uh, that's 59.036243474, uh, I'm going to get uh, something like um, 0 0.51449 with some values. Then remember to say that is, we say 1 divided by that value, um, we are going to get 1.944. Okay, then we are multiplying by what you have here. So it's more like tan 50, 50 we're going to say tan 59.03624347. That gives me 1.667. I round off to two, um, in fact, that's a multiplication relationship there. Uh, say multiply by 1, 1. 1.667. Then we add the ln of. So this part here, I'm still getting uh, the 1.944. Let me say plus uh, that again, which is the same as that, uh, which is a 1.667. Okay. So meaning my L will be equals to 9. Okay. We have a 9 here. Uh, so I'm saying uh, my 1.944 plus 1.667, I'm going to get 3.611 plus uh, natural log of the same value uh, of 3.611. What I get is um, a 1.284. So I add 3.611, then I multiply by 9. What I get is... Um, Um, have I done the correct thing here? Okay, so we are saying. Uh, let me try to redo this. If I think we are saying natural log of uh, three, uh, natural log of um, that's supposed to be three. Yeah, three point. Ah, uh, wait. So if I say one point nine four four plus. Um, one point. No, 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 no. I'm, add, I'm adding. 
instead of multiplying. So that's supposed to be 1.944, okay? 44 4 multiplied by 1.667, okay? So this is supposed to give me, uh, okay, that could have costed me dearly, uh, 3.241. Okay, instead of uh, the value that I was getting, but there we are still um, adding those two. So I'm saying one one point nine four four plus one point six six seven. I'm going to get the three point six six one. But natural log of that value, uh, three point six one one. I'm going to get one point uh, two. One point two eight, which is that value there. So when you add those two, say 3.241, I'm going to get uh, something like, um, I'm going to get 4.525, uh, then I multiply that value by 9, so what I come up with, my L is going to be equals to uh, 40.725 units, that's my length. Okay, so uh, the question seems to be a bit longer, but um, the key thing is that we understand how to go about it like step by step okay so let's try to look at another example um, let's say we have uh, let's say we have a vector valued function RT to be equals to um, that's t e to the t cos uh, that's cos t and the i then that's plus e to the t sine t in the j then that's e to the t in the k and you are evaluating between uh, ln of minus ln of 4 uh, to what to 0 so this is less than that is it really less than that we'll see anyways Okay, so uh, so let's see let's see what we get. So the first derivative here, R T is going to be equals to um, when you when you differentiate this, I differentiated it myself separate. You're going to get uh, something like um, minus e to the t. Uh, that's sine t. Uh, plus e to the t cos what cos t in the i plus that's going to be e to the t cos t plus e to the t sine sine t plus that's supposed to be plus here um, we say plus e to the t in the k itself okay then finding the magnitude of that Finding the magnitude of this, okay. So when determining the magnitude, uh, you are just square, you are just squaring everything here, okay. So the magnitude of the first derivative of that is going to be equal to. So when you try to simplify it yourself, you are going to get something that will appear like um, um, it's going to be. It's going to be root of square root of uh, 3e to the 2t. That's what you're going to get when you simplify that one. I won't do it right now. You can try to do it. Okay. So now we now start determining what our L is. So our L, we, we can say we are moving from... Um, so if I say... Uh, let me try to say ln of 4 is that. So minus ln of 4. Okay. So meaning... Uh, from L, from minus ln of 4 to 0 okay so of that so now here uh, I can try to simplify uh, I can try to make things easy for myself I can put the root 3 outside here okay then I'm evaluating from minus ln of 4 to 0 of square root of what e to the 2t dt and we can try to write this as root of 3 okay from 0 to I mean to zero from uh, minus ln of four, so that is simply you are saying your e to the two t, okay? That is one over two, so this two and that two is going to go. So you have your what? Your dt there. So uh, integrating that part, wow, that's very easy, and very straightforward. It won't 
have to consume more much of our time so uh, that will still give us um, if we have e to the t here dt so when you integrate that's just going to be if I say root of 3 um, that would be e to the t then I'm evaluating from uh, I mean to 0 from minus ln of 4 okay so that's what we have right there so meaning our l our L will be equals to um, root of 3. Uh, so remember to say we have e to the t here. Then we have 0. Uh, then minus ln of that. So that would be like root of 3. So if I get 0 and substitute here, because that's, that's, the, that's my upper limit, so I'm going to have a 1. Okay? Minus. Uh, I'm going to have a 1 minus. 1 minus, so if I get this one, I substitute here. So how is this one going to be that I'm going to have 1 over 4? But how do I come up with that 1 over 4? So it's the fact that I know that I'm saying my e to the minus ln of what? Minus ln of 4, which this is the same as what? e to the, um, in fact, I can say this is 1 over uh, e to the ln of what? ln of 4, of which this is just simply equals to 1 over 4. You just pick this part here why is it that I'm picking that part so remember to say natural log is nothing but log base e of so this is just going to be log base e of 4 so that's like 1 over e to the power uh, log base e of what 4 we have an e here and we have an e here that goes so you mean with what 1 over 4 so we have like minus 1 over 4 here so how does this become that's root of 3 Okay, that's one. Uh, that's going to be four minus one over four. That gives us a uh, root of three. Uh, that's a three divided by four. Okay, so I can try to put that into decimal places since I'm using my calculator. So root of three is one point seven three two zero five zero eight zero eight. So I, I multiply by three. That will give me five point one two. I mean 5.1961524123 I divide that by 4 uh, wait 4 yeah 4 I'm going to get my length to be equals to 1 point that's 1.299 there okay 1.2990381 of which we can just say our area is just equals to 1.299 units okay correct to two, uh, three decimal places and that's how you come up uh, one. So uh, let me try to look at the last example, which is, which I believe is very interesting uh, compared to what we have been doing so far. Of course, the second one that we are just from doing is, it was easier to uh, integrate, yeah, and it's not always the case. But when you have such, it's very good to take advantage of uh, that opportunity. It saves saves a lot of time. Okay, so we have uh, we have our t root two in the i, okay plus t root 2 in the j plus, um, that's open bracket 1 minus t squared in the k okay so now we are evaluating from from 0 comma 0 comma 1 to um, Uh, that's uh, root 2 root 2 here to 0 like that okay so um, how do we then uh, put into something that is uh, like a single value that is going to tell us a lower limit and this one that's going to give us the that's going to give us the, the upper limit okay so what I'll do is that um, I won't finish in this video uh, in order for you to see how this is going to cut that, that's that's how that is going to end up watch the next video just after this one so thank you very much for watching